what is neural occlusion? Measured orthopedic protocols. I'm trying to figure out if the patient possesses stable and adapted joints. And are the patient's issues primarily due to a muscular TMD or not? What are the diagnoses? What's my intent? Responsible treatment begins with a proper diagnosis. Along the way, with all those videos, I'm finding that patients are asking me, hey, who in my, in my area does this? You know, I, I don't want to travel from uh, Santa Barbara, California. Is there someone in California that does what I do? And also I'm getting communications from doctors. How do I learn how to do this? So over the years, I started putting something together that we call the Center for Neural Occlusion, the CNO. And the CNO is, I guess, my passion to pass it along. And we're trying to, I'm trying to surround myself with people that are absolutely amazing at what they do because I know this is something that we as dentists can't treat alone. We need surgeons, we need chiropractors, we need physical therapists, we need headache docs, we need medical radiologists. That's what the CNO is all about. And what's our mantra? Responsible treatment begins with proper diagnosis or diagnoses. Usually it's diagnoses. What started off as a, hey, let's treat, uh, teach people how to do DTR has turned into something much, much, much bigger. In other words, you know, you can't fix everything with that stuff. It's not all about bites. It's not all about teeth. It's not all about down and forward. It's not all about retruded. It's not all about CR. It's not, it's all different. Our motto is measured matters. If I can put a number to it and reproduce it, that by definition is a fact. If I can't put a number to it and I cannot reproduce it, that by definition is an opinion. So you can apply the neural occlusion screening scenarios to whatever kind of dentistry you do. I don't care if it's orthotic based, I don't care if it's neuromuscular, I don't care if it's uh, Dawson based, Panky, whatever. The bottom line is this, we all need to be, be imaging with soft tissue. I'm not saying on every patient, 5% of mine get imaged, that's it. Those of you that have uh, applied the DTR therapy, you ever notice the way they're, oh, I feel so relaxed? Hmm. What if there's sympathetic tone going on there? Ramped up sympathetics mean vasoconstriction. What if this is a reduction of sympathetic inputs and also you get vasodilation? And what if they start tingling? What if all of a sudden that's what's going on? Or if you have claudication, you have pain, right? Ischemia, hypoxia, and claudication cause pain, basically. DTR, I'm in a patient with stable and adaptive joints. They no longer have that, provided it's not fibrotic muscle, a problem. Again, in patients with stable and adaptive joints. So the CBCT studies the past and the present, as I mentioned earlier. I can look at things like growth and development, the bony breakdown, degeneration, the position of the condylar head in the fossa, the spacing, the MRI, I'm studying present and future. I can predict when I have a good scan. Sometimes you don't get the greatest scans back. Again, I will emphasize, find a center with a TMJ coil. Position, condition, and degree of herniation of the cartilaginous disc, or lack thereof. Effusion and edema. Effusion means fluid in spaces. Edema means fluid in hard tissue. And guess what? What if I told you I can see inflammation on an MRI? Can't do that on an x-ray, right? If, I, if I'm a lumberjack and I'm out chopping down trees and I don't wear gloves and I'm swinging that ax all the time and I come home at night and I've got a big water blister on my hand and my wife is screaming at me, you need to wear your gloves, and I'm just ignoring her, I'm stubborn, I've got lots of fluid built up. There's inflammation, right? Well. Guess what the uh, MRI looks at hydrogen protons, right? H2O. So if I see a lot of water where it doesn't belong, that's a sign of inflammation. It may happen in the soft tissue, the effusion, or in the hard tissue, the edema. That's a sign, big time. Fat content, fat has hydrogen. I can see marrow signal. If the marrow, if it's black, it's dead, maybe. I have to cross-correlate with CT. That gets complicated, but the point is I can see things that I, I wouldn't know otherwise. JVA doesn't tell me that. Exam history, none of that tells me that. Until you really image, you don't really know. 
So right and left joint gets a diagnosis. What's the fiber classification? And many of them have a, a cervical issue or a dystonia. So if a macro trauma causes an intercapsular problem or tears up my joint, and I take a blow to my head and neck region, how far away are my cervical uh, vertebrae from TMJ? Four inches maybe, right? So if I tear TM ligaments, why wouldn't I be tearing cervical ligaments? If I tear cervical, li cervical ligaments, why wouldn't I be tearing TM ligaments? 